Hey everybody, it's Eugene here. Today we're going to be talking about using targets inside of Recon 3D. Now the reason you would want to use targets is to help improve accuracy. So normally when you're scanning with the phone, the accuracy depends on the sensors that are on the phone. And so these are not really high, high accuracy sensors. They get pretty close and sometimes, you know, you overshoot or you undershoot. It's difficult to know. And I think that's the biggest problem is that you don't know what you have unless you have a way of verifying it or checking it. So with targets inside of Recon 3D, you can set up two targets, set up a known distance between the two by measuring them, and then you can improve your results somewhere on the order of like plus or minus 5%. It just depends. So I'm going to be doing three things today or talking about three things. The first one is going to be preparation. So if you're going to be printing your targets on just pieces of paper, or if you're going to be preparing them some other way on a hardboard, um, on wood or on metal, if you're getting it printed at some graphics place, um, then just some considerations about that. The second thing is going to be on placement. So where you're going to be putting it in the scene. So maybe what I'll do is just do like an outdoor scene where we have like a vehicle or something like that. And then we'll talk about an indoor scene as well and how you would measure between them. Finally, we're also going to talk about the scanning, okay? So how should you scan the scene, the object, the car, whatever it might be with the targets in place, okay? So, and we're going to talk about detection and things like that. So behind me, what I have are a number of targets and you can see some are look a little bit more faded, some are darker. And then even over here, I've got a whole bunch of different sizes of targets. And we're going to look at detection and distance as well. So let's get started first with preparation. So when you want to get started, you need a target somehow. And so the first thing or one of the simplest things to do is just print it out on a piece of paper. So this is unlike, for example, targets or checkered targets that are used for a terrestrial laser scanner. In those cases, you're trying to detect the target in the infrared range. And so the type of ink that you use is important. So if you're using just a regular uh, ink cartridge, and then what may happen is you don't detect actually the color. You see it in the visible spectra, but you don't see it in the infrared range. But we don't have that problem because we're really just looking in the visible spectra. We want to be able to detect this target inside of the video. And so as a result, just a regular black and white target is helpful. And you can just print it on a regular eight and a half by 11. Um, you can print them larger or smaller depending on what it is that you need to do. Now, in a previous video, I did a little segment where what I did was I prepared these targets here. So these are just little wooden panels that I found at a store and it's used for like artistic means. And what I did was painted it white and then I painted this little grid pattern here. And so these are April tags. And so April tags are basically a series of checkered targets. Think of it as like a checkerboard or a chessboard. Uh, this particular family of targets is a nine by nine grid. And you can think of these little squares here as bits. Okay. So uh, black would be a zero and maybe a white would be a one, something like that. So you have uh, a large number of different combinations that you can use. So these are unique and there's actually a whole family that you can use. But for simplicity inside of Recon 3D, you print out the same target twice and then you just measure between them. Now, um, this particular target was one that I made before, as I said, and there's a video on that. You can look at how you do that. But some people are actually looking at making them at, for example, a graphics arts place or something like that. And that's not a problem. You can print these on metal. You can print them on cardboard. Um, you can, you know, print them on like a cardstock, whatever it is, if you want to reuse it. The thing that's important here is you try not to make it glossy. Okay. So if it's glossy or it's shiny, it could sometimes cause a little problems because these little checkered squares are not visible. So that's an important point. Okay. Flat matte is usually the best for sure. If you put something like this in sunlight outdoors, you're going to get some kind of glare. Even if it's matte, you'll pass by in a certain position and you'll see that you just get glare and it just messes everything up. So that's basically it. There isn't a lot to the, um, you know, preparing these. The easiest thing is just paper or cardstock. If you make something like this, then it becomes more permanent. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell for preparation. Now let's talk about 
placement. So when we talk about target placement, what we mean is where are you going to put these targets so that you can easily measure between them, but at the same time still get an accurate measurement for the overall scene. Now, there's a couple of considerations. One is going to be indoor and one is going to be outdoor and whether or not you have vertical surfaces or not. So let's take the easier case, which is indoor. So if I have a scenario where I'm going to be putting targets up on walls, what I want to try and do is make them opposite one another so that it's easy to measure. That would be one way to do it. You could also put them on the floor. So you could put a target on the floor, tape it down, and then put another one some distance away. And it's always good if they are far apart. Okay, the farther apart they are, then the better it is. And I've covered this in the training course and I'll, I'll put a little graphic here up on the screen as to why that is. Or maybe I'll cover it a little bit later outside when we do the car. But basically far apart. And in the case of having them on a wall, what I would recommend is getting something like a little laser disto. And these are fairly inexpensive. They're maybe like $70, $80 depending on the range that you want to get. Um, but for example, something like this, you would turn it on and there's just a little laser here. And these are accurate to, you know, usually about a couple of millimeters. And what I would do is I would put it at the center of the target like this, tape one up on the wall, center of the target. I would turn it on and then take a measurement to the opposite wall. And wherever I see the laser dot, actually what I would do is then take the other target and put it up exactly where the laser dot hits the center here. And what I'm actually measuring is the center of this white square. That's important, okay? So it has to be center to center distance. So in the case of a target on the wall, Disto is really, really simple. It's a little bit more difficult to do when you have something like a tape measure, unless you are across the wall this way, and that is also possible. But always think about spreading the targets out as much as possible. Now, if you wanna put these on the ground, it's pretty simple. Couple of targets, drag this, uh, the tape measure from center to center, and you'll be able to get a measurement. Now, if you are outside, and you're using something like these, then you want to be able to have these on a fairly flat and level surface. So they want to kind of be like this on the ground. Now it is possible, I've got a little quarter 20 nut here to mount them opposing each other and then take a measurement just as if they were like on the wall, but outdoors it's a little bit easier to just drop these on the ground. Now one thing you don't want to have happen is, you know, you have one elevated, you have one down, and for example, they're not flat, okay? They're kind of like in all kinds of weird positions. That's going to be a lot harder to measure with a tape measure. So the more flat and level they are between the two, then it'll be easier to measure in between. So I think what I'll do is I'll go out and we'll do a couple of examples, and then we will explain, for example, why you place the targets farther apart and that may be helpful. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell in terms of placement. Not too bad. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to explain why targets should be farther apart using this graphic here. So I have two scenarios here. I have one where I have these two targets which are close together, and then I have another scenario here which the two targets are farther apart. So the start point of these targets is the same. And then of course one is small and then one is farther away. So if this was the exact same location here and here, but I, you know, I've set up the targets two different ways. I could measure, let's say where these two little dots are. Okay. And maybe I'm interested in measuring something uh, in this area. Now in the top scenario, these two dots are inside of or between the two targets. And in the scenario on the bottom, okay, these two dots are outside of these two targets. So let's say, for example, let's start with the top one here. So I've got a target here, I've got a target here, and I make some small marking error, okay? There's an error that I make. Maybe it's, let's say it's just for the sake of argument, it's five millimeters. So across this distance, there's a, a five millimeter error. And that's what this marking error here is. And then in this scenario here, I make the same marking error, okay? So I make a five millimeter error between these two targets, and that's here. So this space here and this space here are equal. 
But now what I want to do is after having scanned it, I want to take a measurement and I'm going to take the measurement around the same area, just along this line up and down. So here you can see when I look at the error and I come back down between the two, okay, I have this error X and this uh, distance here is rather small, okay, or relatively small. It's not as large as the marking error that I have here. But in the scenario at the bottom, even though I make the same marking error as here, because I'm measuring outside of where these two targets are located, what I do is I start to compound the errors. The errors start to get larger. So in this area here, the errors are much greater. So the space that's here and here is much greater than what I have up top. So what that means in practice is that if you spread your targets far apart and you're measuring in between the two targets, you should be measuring a smaller component of the overall error. Okay. And the opposite is true as well. If you measure outside of where these two targets are located, then you start to extrapolate or you start to expand on those errors. So they get larger and larger as you get farther away from where these two targets are. So it's very important to keep these far apart and try to measure in between. Now, look, that's not always possible in some cases, but Always do your best to spread them apart, and the farther apart they are, the larger your scale. Typically, the better your results will be. Okay, so we've got our targets here, and I've set them up um, one way for scanning a vehicle. And so what you'll notice is I have one near the front of the vehicle and I have one near the back. Now, in truth, the farther apart these are, the better it's going to be, okay? Especially if my object of interest is gonna be inside where the two targets are located, okay? So the farther apart you want the targets to be on the outside or as far apart as possible and everything that you want to measure is going to be on the inside and there's a very important reason for that and it has to do with sort of interpolating or extrapolating the errors so let's say for example over here um, because I'm very far apart if I make a very small measurement error here okay so something let's say the tape was off this way a little bit or something like that when I go to measure in here, what I'm doing is I'm cutting that error down, okay? So I'm not making it any larger. But for example, let's say I had these two targets very close together. If I make the same error that I did there, which was just like one or two millimeters, what happens is the lines start to separate, okay? So basically as you extrapolate out, if I want to measure outside of the area where the targets are located, then I run into a problem. Okay, so I'll put a graphic up on the screen that helps explain that a little bit. <clears throat> now, basically what I would do here is I put the two targets down, I measure between them, whatever distance is fine, you can use inches, you can use feet, or you can use meters, and then I wanna enter that in. So, once I've got that, I need to remove this tape because I don't want this blocking any of the targets here. <clears throat> so let me just put that aside. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to start up a recording here with uh, Recon 3D and let me record my screen and I'll put microphone on. Okay, now we're going to start recording here. Great, and I'm going to go into Recon 3D. I'm just going to create a new scan and this five millimeters is fine target detection and also remember you can always find the targets inside of recon 3d you can print it and you can share it at the moment it's inside of the target detection screen if i click on it it's here you can see you can share or print um, in a future release it's going to be moved to the, the settings page but for now this is where it is and then i want to put in the distance here so i have five meters for this one so i'm just going to go ahead and go done and basically I'm ready to scan. So let's have a look at this. Now, there's a little bit of cloud here, but you see that as I scan, it gets detected. Okay, I've got the green box over there and I'm just gonna move here and over here, you can see that I get it detected again. Now, if it was sunny, depending on where I move, you can see here it's a little bit lighter. So the contrast of the targets is different than if I go here. You can see here it's nice and black. Okay, when I move on this side, you see it starts to get light and that has to do with the position that I'm at with respect to the sun. So sometimes you're just going to naturally get glare on here. Over here it's nice and dark, good contrast. As I move around let's see what happens. 
If I move into a similar area, you can see here it's starting to lighten up. Okay, so I have the same problem. So those are things you have to be careful of. Another important factor here, let me stop this. Another important factor here is going to be about placing the targets in the shade or in the sun, one of the two. But you don't want to have, for example, a shadow which is cast halfway across here. And that's because it'll confuse the algorithm on you know, what is dark and what is light. So that's happened before and that can be an issue. Um, other things you could do, for example, if you just had a, a piece of uh, paper and you wanted to tape it up onto the side here and maybe up on the back, you could measure between it that way. That would work as well. But again, the farther apart that you can get these targets, the better it's going to be. Okay, so let's talk about actually scanning the targets. Okay, and I've got a couple of uh, experiments that I want to run here. One for detection distance, how far away from the wall you should be. And the other one has to do with how small these are or how large you print them. But also you can see this target here is much lighter than this target here. So does the the, the, the darkness or the contrast between the white and the black checkers make a difference. And they do for sure. But I need to show it to you so that you'll see it while I'm scanning it. So let's start with the first experiment, which is I'm going to start scanning this wall from farther back. And I'll start like at one meter and then I'll go two meter, three meter, four meter. And you'll see I've got these markers on the ground here. And with these markers, I'll be able to tell more or less how far away from the wall I am. And I'm going to use an iPad for this one. And once we get that going, uh, we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so it looks like I'm recording. I'm not sure if you can see on the ground here, but I'll pass the camera so you can see that I've got some markers. I've put a tape measure out here so I know what distance that I'm at. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fire up Recon 3D and I'm going to create a new project. And actually, I'll just use the, uh, well, I'll just call this uh, targets target tests. And I'm not really going to scan for scale. I just want to scan for detection. I want to find out um, how well detected these different types of um, targets will be. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on create. Now the scan density won't matter. I'm just going to click on tar target detection and it doesn't matter what the scale is here. I'm just going to hit anything just to put something in there and I'm going to go ahead and save scan. So it's ready to go. I'm going to start from far away here. So I'm going to start here at about five meters and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click scan. So right off the bat, you can see that I've got some targets that are um, detected. Okay. And those are the main three that are there, but the one on the right, farthest right, uh, you can just see it's trying to, trying to detect. Okay. But it's having a difficult time. So let me move to four meters. I'm going to move to four meters here. Okay, and I'm moving this around. Now you can see the one on the right, the, the one that's very faint, is having a little bit uh, difficult time still, but it's kind of flashing in and out. And I'm at the four meter position here. Okay, let me go one more step forward. So now I'm forward. Okay, now you see some more that are starting to pop up, okay? So those ones that are on the right, those are printed on just like eight and a half by 11. So it's probably, you know, close to eight inches by eight inches square. So you can see I'm at the three meter mark. Right, but those, uh, the ones with high contrast were detected at five meters, no problem. Let me take another step forward. Okay, now we're getting uh, the faint one is sort of flashing in and out. And you can see this little, um, these little sets that I have on the wall there are also trying to be detected, okay? So the size of the target matters. Let me go to one meter. Okay, so here, this one is having a little bit of a problem in the video. That's interesting. You see the faint one is not really helping all that much. And then over here, that's good. That's good. That's good. Now this is going to be the interesting one. I'm at about one meter. Okay. And right now we are detecting these right down to about, well, it looks like the second smallest one. So that looks like four centimeters by four centimeters. So that's what that, that little guy is there, but there's an even smaller one. That's like five millimeters by five millimeters or some little smaller ones. So let me move closer. Okay. There we go. So now we've got uh, about two by two centimeter. Down here is a little bit bigger one. And then we have this little guy here. Let's see if I can even go closer. Okay, now I would never do this, okay? I would never go that close. Uh, it's just to show you that it doesn't matter what the size is. It's just that you can get really close. And that little guy there, let's see if we can get that little guy. Oh, there he goes. So that's uh, five millimeters by five millimeters, okay? So that's really, really cool. 
So basically when it comes to the targets, okay, the size is gonna determine your distance here. So this one up here, that's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. As I go back, let's see when that drops off. Uh, roughly, let me go back, let me go back. And right there. So at about 10 centimeters, I'm just at about three and a half meters. If I take a step forward to three, uh, about three meters, it's just starting to flash. If I go to two, definitely comes in. Okay, so that just gives you a relative size and detection. Now, the important thing here is eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Okay, if you print that out and you go all the way back to five meters, which is the range of the LiDAR sensor, and it doesn't matter, but you could actually go a little bit more. In fact, if I take another step back, okay, I'm at about six right now, and you can see that it's not really all that great. Okay, so eight and a half by 11 sheet, if the target or the checkered pattern is about eight inches by eight inches, then it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. I move to five meters and then it's okay. So hopefully that experiment will explain the distance and the size of the target. Any larger than those sheets of paper, then I can go farther back, but any smaller and I gotta get closer. So that's pretty much it for targets. It's really simple to do. Remember, preparation, print two targets out, uh, nice contrast on the targets. You don't want anything that's sort of faded or light as that'll reduce your range. Also think about the size of the target, okay? So if you're gonna be using smaller targets because you're gonna be doing an interior of a car or you're gonna be doing a smaller space, no problem, you can. You can ab absolutely detect them, but just make sure that you get close enough that you actually detect a target and you're not five meters away when you have only a five by five centimeter target. Uh, also remember that glare and sunlight can have an issue there and you wanna be able to to spread them out as far as possible but you still want to be able to accurately measure between the two so if you're using a steel tape on the ground more or less level and more or less on the same plane and you should be able to do a pretty good job but if you're getting a lot of uneven surfaces and things like that that's gonna be a lot more difficult to measure indoors target the target use a disto something like something like this it can be really useful center set it up wherever the dot hits put another target at the center and then take a few measurements take the average of the measurements and that will be helpful enter that value inside of recon 3d take your scan and then go from there now another thing that could be helpful just from an accuracy standpoint would be to take some additional reference measurements it never hurts and so, you know, if you take two or three other measurements along the side of a car, inside of a room, some other walls, some other markers that are on the ground, you can always verify and validate the accuracy of your scan. And that's a really important concept in forensics. Always have a backup, make sure that you have some other measurements that you can qualify and validate, and um, it should work out. It's pretty simple to do, and I think it's a pretty good way to improve your accuracy. Thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.